InfoWars as well. Magazine saying it could be the demise of the Democratic Party because they're pushing the stagnant Hillary. Hillary f forgets where she is in public. But the really big bad news, the disgusting news, Orrin Hatch on trade, Bill, I don't know fully what's in the TPP myself. There's actually a video of that. It's on uh, Breitbart. Drudge Report has it linked. DrudgeReport.com. Senator Elizabeth Warren went to the Senate floor to push for immediate consideration of a bill that would make the Obama trade text public. You've got a coalition of liberals and uh, Tea Party fighting together against the establishment Republicans and Democrats. Right now, Congress has to go to a secured room to read the text, thousands of pages, and take notes or to discuss what is in it with the public. The motion uh, failed when Senator Orrin Hatch, Republican Utah, objected since it required unanimous consent. And they go on with the quote uh, here with Orrin Hatch and others uh, basically whitewashing it and Orrin Hatch saying he doesn't know what's in it himself. Well, it's 30 plus points, only one of which is leaked and it's incredibly draconian to free speech, the end of internet freedom as we know it. It's a consortium of private corporations and lobbyists with government representatives from China, you name it, on the board with voting power to veto the United States and Congress isn't reading it, isn't letting it come out and is turning it over. This is world government. This is corporate world government tyranny in your face. This is what we're dealing with. Now I mentioned the really good news if you just joined us. Uh, the official Al Qaeda slash ISIS magazine and videos have come out attacking Infowars.com. And they're saying that they're sick of the conspiracy theorist claiming that Western intelligence is funding their jihad operation, that they're having trouble getting recruits uh, out of the UK, Europe, and the United States and Canada. Uh, again, I've explained how this works. They've had the controlled opposition come out and say that Jones is being CIA again, claiming that ISIS is, is real. It's all fake. So they have that fake attack. And then they got the other attack saying, no, no, no. Um, it is 100% real, not partially fake, like Alex says. What's really going on is this is a large synthetic terror group funded with over $5 billion by the United States alone, several billion from NATO, the French and others, Turkey, you name it, big coalition, officially sending in jihadis trained in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and other areas with backups from the West uh, to go in as basically mercenaries. They've taken two-thirds of Syria or close to it. They've taken part of Iraq. They're going to create a new Islamic state out of it that's run by Saudi Arabia. That was always the plan to break Iraq in three parts. Just Google, Pentagon plans to break Iraq in three parts. That was out 15 years ago. That's Wesley Clark talked about it, okay? I just happen to know what's going on. This is not rocket science. And there's my video from last week. The ISIS Ramadi victory and the breakup of Iraq, order out of chaos through Sunni-Shia conflict. Kurt Nemo wrote about it. Um, I guess he's written a new article about it, but there's the video uh, where I covered it last week going over it all. And they're hopping mad that I sit there with a map and just explain to everybody. In fact, if they're so mad, can you guys bring me a hands-free microphone for later once Dude gets in here? I'm going to go over to the map over there of the Middle East, and I'm going to explain this even better for people. Because it needs to be done for all the young Muslims out there. They want to radicalize Muslims so they can have a clash of civilizations and destroy your culture and destroy good Muslims, okay? And that's why the globalists are funding both sides to collide. And you know that's a fact. And the real sin is killing Christians and, 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 and non-radical Muslims and not being tolerant. And the real sin is, is, is working for the satanic Saudi Arabian government and, and going around and persecuting people. Repent now. Repent now. I'll guarantee you your soul's in jeopardy if you're a Muslim, Christian, whatever, if you do these type of atrocities and if you don't repent of it. It's never too late. But you need to repent of what you've done and you need to leave ISIS, leave Al-Qaeda, and stop it right now. I want to warn you, though, they'll grab you on the way back because you're not real Al-Qaeda if you haven't participated in stuff yet because they know you may speak out. So you may never be able to go home again. So you really got set up, you were part of something really sick, and um, your best bet's just to get out of Al-Qaeda or ISIS and go back and shut your mouth, they may leave you alone.
So yes, we are Infowars.com, and our listeners are the main contributors uh, in helping break up ISIS. That's right. Our government could take them out anytime they wanted to. They're waiting until it gets out of control. Then they're going to send them in and push them back into western Iraq, into that area of Syria. That's been the plan. I said it last year. I said it four years ago. It's always been the plan. And th But again, we're decompartmentalizing where their own operatives cannot defeat us because we're telling their people what's going to happen before it happens. You can't beat the fact that we have your game plan. And, and again, I'm not on a power trip, but I've realized we need to let the listeners understand how epic this, this, this time is and how powerful you are and how powerful truth is. Now, Leanne McAdoo joins us right through the rest of the hour. I want to have her in here with uh, Do when he comes up and Paul Watson. Uh, and Paul Watson's holding on Skype right now. He'll be with us as well. We're going to have a big roundtable discussion for the rest of the hour. Before we go to Paul Watson, your take on the free speech attacks yesterday. Recap where we were, what we were doing for new listeners at the Pro-Life Rally. You were here watching it live. Uh, you helped discover, along with CJ, their Facebook, that they were communist, that I'd already covered them before and didn't know it. And then they would deny, live on TV and radio, when we had their pictures up, and videos up that they were communist or Maoist. Uh, and then the I love Satan, I love killing my children. Uh, and, you know, they had devil tats and all of it. What would you call these people? Uh, uh, scum of the earth, uh, under the rock dwellers, uh, psychic vampires, uh, the biggest losers in the galaxy. Um, really sad and confused. Super, I mean, here we have uh, the one girl who seemed to be sort of the leader yelling at Karen, calling her a white savior and stuff, and, you know, how Well, the leader, the, the, the leader was a little blonde, and she's a Time Warner operative uh, over there, I guess, over there working at Time Warner. But we're going to investigate that and let talk to Time Warner. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously confused, because she has tattoos on her arms of two racist white people who are, she, like, bows down to them. Hello, Stalin, Lenin, what are they, you know what I mean? Like, how confused do you have to be to say how against you are of, of the, you want to take down the, the white race and then you get them tatted on your body and you, I don't know. I'm it's just, totally sick. Well, I mean, what did you make of her saying I killed my babies? Well, I got to tell you, I couldn't sleep last night. I was up really late last night because that just, I can't believe that there are people like that. They're real people who are organizing a lot of young people and who are mobilizing young people in, in Austin and other cities around the country. And That's who leads them all over, I'm telling you. It's it's frightening. It's so frightening. And I was like, I mean, it really shook up. I could not fall asleep last night. I just get replaying that over and over in my head about how they'd, they say, excuse me, pardon me, as they're barreling through you. Or they would shove and push. And then as soon as someone shoved and pushed them, they're like, oh, calm down. Calm down, oh. You know? You're assaulting me, I'm going to sue. Yeah, and like everything They'd they be like, say, oh, hello, officers, we like you so much. We're yeah. on their website, kill pigs. Right, and it's the opposite. Rotten the pig truth. heads. And, yeah. It's the opposite of the truth. Everything they say is complete opposite. That's what communists are like. Leanne, here's what's scary. I've been doing this 20 years. Well, 25 as an activist. That's normal. I mean, to think... They all get PhDs and go on to run things. Yeah. It's, they look the same, they act the same. Each generation, I've had them come over and grab me and go, we're going to kill you someday, Jones, when the commies take over. Ah, we're going to yeah. get your children. I mean, that's who they are. And they're, they're very patient, and they'll wait decades to implement this plan. I mean, how many more people Smart psychopaths don't just go grab kids off the street. Yeah. They go, and they become the government. And they plot, and they plot, and they say, everyone just calm down and wait. We'll let you know when we're ready to attack. So that's the thing, is that they plot this, and they'll wait years, decades. I mean... You see these these policies, like you said, Obama graduated out of that, and now here he's the president of the United States. Decades later, you know. Absolutely, we're going to break. Watson's with us for the rest of the hour, doing a great job over at Infowars.com. Paul, you watched this from afar, but uh, giving us your take from London, uh, what really stands out for you? Well, it's just the irony and the hypocrisy of it, Alex. I mean, we've got them on video calling themselves anarchists. They call themselves anarchists while embracing the most violent form of statism in recorded history, right. <laughs> the cultural Maoist revolution, the Great Leap Forward. 
which killed at least 60 million people, okay, state-imposed genocide, and they call themselves anarchists. And in fact, their own name, Red God, the Red Gods, comes from what Mao called for to enact that violent, brutal revolution. So that's derived directly from what Mao called for back in the 60s. And it's also, again, the hypocrisy of, you know, protesting against state murder, Black Lives Matter, against police brutality. When you're calling for state murder, always a genius, Watson. You're going to come back and break it down. The last 60, 70 years, and look how hellish it is, and now humanity's falling apart. Because having a, no value on people creates a hellish world. Not a good one. We've got breaking news. They've got a group of uh, U.S. military veterans, group of veterans building army, raising funds to put down the rabid dog of ISIS. Uh, let me tell these guys this. It was the U.S. military a few years ago that said no to openly backing Al-Qaeda, so the government changed the name to ISIS to confuse you and is actually funding them. The way to beat this is info war, explaining that ISIS is funded and run by Western intelligence and trained openly in bases in Turkey. And now even Al-Qaeda is coming out attacking info wars. I say Al-Qaeda, they call themselves ISIS, and saying, don't listen, we are um, you know, not part of the West. We're not Western funded. And Steve Watson did a story. It's great. We could do another story adding even more admissions to, hey, directly to ISIS, a message to ISIS fighters. Here's how you've been conned. Here's the whole history. Don't be part of this. Leave now. And we could have ISIS basically shut down and collapse. The military won't be sent in until they've already established their state, part of Syria and part of Iraq, breaking Iraq in three parts. That's always been the plan. Kurd, uh, Shiite, Wahhabist. Three parts, that's the plan, with the third part extending into Syria and then breaking the rest of Syria up into other groups. Uh, basically, Western run on the coastline to get the pipelines, to get the oil and gas. Paul Watson, I want to get back into the vampires and finish up with them. But first, uh, pretty big news to have Al-Qaeda putting us in their videos, ISIS putting us in their videos, and coming out directly and saying, don't listen to the conspiracy theorists, to their own recruits, and admitting it's hurting them. I mean, that is exciting. It, it shows the truth trumps everything, Paul Watson. Is it starting to get just too much, though, to even believe how InfoWars is changing the world on a daily basis? Well, I mean, we're definitely steering the narrative. And I think given the news that it's, quote, conspiracy theorists who are making all these militants flee from ISIS, you know, I think we're owed apologies by the mainstream media and by the White House because it was their directives as far back as 2008 in the Bush administration, which said that, quote, conspiracy theories were a recruiting ground for terrorists in the Middle East. And now it's actually worked out the opposite way. <laughs> While they're getting all these, you know, mysterious airdrops of weapons from the U.S., that we're the ones that are convincing them to leave by pointing out... That's right. The Iraqi president has documented the airdrops to them. Exactly. And, you know, Bel Hajj, the guy in Libya who is leading ISIS forces in Libya, he was armed and funded by NATO, by the U.K., by the U.S., in the first place when we went in and took out Gaddafi. So the fact that they're waking up to this and realizing that um, the goal of ousting Assad, which was their goal for years, is now being achieved to a large extent by ISIS. They control half of Syria now. That really, what does it, what does it benefit the US military industrial complex to fight ISIS? So again, we're, we're, owed, we're owed apologies by all these people who claim that we were the terrorist recruiting ground for ISIS. Absolutely. Uh, getting back to the vampires, you were making a great point. They claim they're anarchists, but then they got Lenin and Stalin all over them. They love Mao, the ultimate total status to live like kings while killing tens of millions apiece. And then you expand on that. Uh, I mean, just the idiocy of it. And then creamily saying, I kill my children, I love Satan. How would you describe these people? Just the most spoiled, rotten, little maggot punks uh, disconnected from reality? I mean, how would you describe these rats? I think you really don't need to throw many pejoratives at them. They discredit themselves with their own behavior. They have the debating skills of six-year-old children on the playground who can only hurl insults because 
you know, they, they, they've got no debating skills.